Welcome to Samsta Games, the place to find new strategy games. And today we're going to play a game called Dimension Rain, which is a roguelike deck builder. The, it has come out about a month ago into early access, but the English localization has literally just come out today, probably a few days ago by the time you see this. And it's a really, really cool one. It's, it has a really interesting mechanic called Break Chain that allows you to prolong your turn so essentially you can kill two three four five enemies in a single turn which is kind of awesome so i really like this one a lot so we're going to start a brand new game we're playing throne of the beast normal my high score has been 293 hopefully we'll beat that all right we've got two characters we've got camilla the witch and edge the samurai vampire we can change his job to Ninja Rogue, but I like the Samurai Vampire better. On the right you can see his stats, you can see his HP, attack, defense, and mana points. And on the left you can see his perks and skills. We're not going to talk about them just yet because I want to show you off the combat before we go more into detail in this. Because otherwise it wouldn't make much sense. So let's go straight into the combat. Alright, so we've got the map here and we can pick where we want to go, just like in typical roguelike back builders. Let's go on the left, we're going to move towards the ruins. Alright, so we're going to fight a small goblin pack. Now I'm going to explain the coolest feature in this game. So, each character has one action, so essentially you get two actions per turn. If you hover over a card, it's going to tell you the damage on the enemy and it says something called break. If you insta-kill an enemy, which means you kill them in one shot, you get... Um, a free action essentially there's a limit to how many free actions you can get we can get two maximum so for one actual action we could get two free actions and remember we get two actions for, per turn so at the most you could get six hit per turn so what i'm going to do is I'm going to use the shadow flame here to attack this first guy this is going to give us the break so we get another free attack we're going to use it on this guy and we get another break so we can use it over here now you might saw that some of these cards darkened when we were playing so we weren't able to play them well that's because first of all they alternate between the characters so we can always use them all and this is a start so because we killed all the enemies a new turn begins so at the moment all of these cards are lit up because i can choose which character i want to start with but after i finish with that character i'm going to jump to the other character and only be able to use their card so for example i'm going to use the card from this set so from edges set and I'm going to get break and now I can only use one of these because it's Camilla's turn. She's going to get a break and now we're going to go back to edge. All right, so that's important. You need to watch out because you're alternating between your characters within the same turn between the actions. So we want to make sure that you have an ability to kill an enemy. Each um, encounter or battle, of course, has a goal to, to destroy the enemies in the battle. If there is a boss, you need to only kill the boss. It will kill all the other enemies as well. But you also have as like a secondary goal. In this case, it was win the battle taking less than seven total damage. And if you do it, you get additional bonus, which is this money in our case here. And this is the regular reward. So this regular rewards gives us a card. We get two options for Edge and one option for Camille. We could either get Tanto attack with attack plus one. So this is going to take the stats from Edge for attack and increase it by one. And this is the range on how we can kill the enemies. From, for, for Camilla, we get piercing attack with attack plus one and short spears attack plus four and actually does area damage of two enemies. So we're gonna grab this for edge. I'm gonna move on. All right. Now, at this point, we can level up. We're gonna start off by leveling up Camilla. And we can, sorry, we can level up over here. It's going to increase her max HP, her maximum mana points, and her relic slots. And we can pick perk or a skill. So the perk is mana discharge. When a weapon is broken, recover four mana points and attack plus three to self for one turn. Or we can grab a skill. So skills are cards that you can use only if you have enough mana points. This one calls mana two mana points. Uh, you get more mana points every turn. So you might not be able to use it for the first turn, but in the following turns you can. And what this does is attacks with attack plus one and applies defense minus one. Uh, it takes four actions until we can use it again and has turned because at the beginning of each turn it lowers its effect by one. All right, so essentially after one turn the defense is gone. Uh, we're going to grab the skill for her because she doesn't have many attacking cards at the moment. So I'm quite happy with that. We could go to battle and get uh, a weapon and or dimension stone. Dimension stone is the thing that allows us to upgrade. Or we could go into the ruins so we could get a relic, which is what I want. So we're going to do that in a moment. Now we could level up our boy as well so let's do it we're gonna increase his max hp and relic slot and we can give him 
And HP is at 1, attack plus 2. Now let's just increase his regular attack. That's a really cool thing. It's just all of his attack is increased. And let's go to the ruins because I want to get a relic. Alright. Sturdy stone statue. So we're going to start this off with an attack of 3 with Camilla. Then we'll do death edge with edge and now we're gonna jump here to shadow flame now we're supposed to perform one perfect kill which we already uh, got so we're fine all right this is the boss if we kill the boss we actually don't have to worry about killing anybody else so what could we do here ice needle Ooh. so we should start with the girl because if we could increase the attack of the spear we might be able to hit the tough gargoyle to get a break there. So we're going to start with the Ice Needle. No, we're going to start with the Shadow Flame with Camilla. Then we're going to use the Short Spear, which now does damage of 10 to allow me to get a break on the Gargoyle. And then she can kill him, but that's okay. Because remember, this was only the first turn, right? Because we got all that bonus. So now we can just easily kill him with, with Nagamaki, for example. We finished off the boss and we have won. And we got that perfect kill we needed. So we get even more money and we could get another card. Cor corruption. All right. So, so these are relics. So relics give you some sort of a basic bonus. For example, this giant's mantle gives you max HP plus five. But on top of that, th this game is just, this game has so much stuff. I'm so excited for this one. This one, what this gives you, it gives you karma. And if you have a lot of karma in one st specific type, usually it starts off with three and then more bonuses, you get an extra bonus. So for example, if you have a lot of things that give you corruption, you get some sort of a passive e effect with corruption or cunning or things like that. The numbers here are too low, but once they get too high enough, you get some extra effect. So we could get a uh, plus max five HP. And HP is 50% or greater at the end of turn, recover one mana point to self. This is actually quite good. When mana point is one or under, enemy phase begins. All allies defense plus two. I think I like the extra mana. We're gonna grab this cunning thing. All right. Then we're gonna equip the relics. So we're gonna grab a new, we're gonna grab uh, Camilla and we're gonna give her this relic. Oh, actually, the first effect of the... Yeah, okay, so the first effect of cunning would be if I had cunning of three, which I don't, on a perfect kill, I would make all my skills reusable one action earlier, and every time a turn begins, I would attack one random enemy with fire of one, so I'd burn them for one, which is really, really cool passive ability, so I think it's a really good thing to look at that. Now, we could go into camp to rest, but we have full HP, so there's no point, so let's just jump into another battle. All right, let's do this thing. All right, we're going to start this off with win the battle taking less than 12 total damage. Shouldn't be a problem. We'll start this with her. We'll use her ice needle on this guy. Then we'll use the death edge. I was kind of hoping to attack him. Yeah, we're going to use the Nagamaki to hit up this guy. Camilla can use Shadow Flame to hit this one. She cannot use the break chain because we, we kind of up at the limit. Then we'll go with him. He's gonna kill off this first guy. Now she can't quite kill him, which is a bit unfortunate, but he's stunned, so it's not that big of a deal because he can't hit us this turn, which is okay. All right, we're gonna go with... Ooh, 10 damage is nice, but we don't really need 10 damage. We're gonna start with Edge. And we're gonna hit this goblin. Then she's gonna go and she's going to kill this swordsman. Edge is then going to use the spear. Now he's just gonna use his death edge just like a regular attack. And then our girl could use fire on the enemy. And then death edge can finish him off. Uh, edge can finish him off with death edge, which is kind of funny. And we've got a perfect kill, we didn't take any damage, now we've got the boss. Alright, so this should be pretty easy. We can just use the fire, we, get, we do 12 damage. And, uh, we, yeah, we, we hit him once. And then we're gonna use the Nagamaki to finish... Actually, yeah, I didn't finish him off, that's alright. Because we've got our second action, which can now finish him off. Because all of that was free until now. Very good. Alright, we could grab more money as a reward. And we've got some Dimension Stones so we could level up. And now we can grab an attack card. Attack with attack plus three for Edge. Attack with attack plus two for Camilla. We'll grab that. 
Dark plus two, because she seems to have too low of an attack, so we want to increase it a little bit. Alright. Scout Goblin True. We'll start with her DMR. This doesn't cost her any mana points, that's important. Then we'll go with Edge, he's gonna hit up this goblin. She'll use Shadow Flame to hit this guy up. Then Edge will go with Nagamaki. Nice. Alright, another set of enemies. Win the battle taking no damage, we'll, we'll try. Alright, so we start off with her. We'll get ourselves a break. Then Edge is going to not use any of his abilities and she's going to use Shadow Flame to finish off the boss. We did it with no damage and we don't need to fight anymore. Perfect. We've got more money and we've got another card. So the girl has a good abilities with whip. I think she gets some sort of passive bonuses if she uses a whip. Attack with attack plus one plus pull. So pull uh, grabs the enemy and moves him towards me. Uh, but short spear, attack with attack plus one for two enemies. I kind of like the short spear because it allows me to do multi-attack. So let me just show off the basic ability of her. You can see here, when attacking with the whip, recover one mana point to solve. We're going to level her up. Increase her attack, yeah, that's pretty important. And we're gonna use three dimension stones for that. And we could give her when a mana point is one or under when an enemy takes damage. Uh, attack point plus one to me. Oh, that's actually pretty good. So essentially, if we have her with low mana points, she's going to be a bit stronger attacking wise. Alternatively, we could grab a skill. Make skills reusable to action early and target loses one HP. Now we're gonna grab this. Thirst for power. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's do an elite battle this time. Got a ruins on a camp pretty soon after, so we should be able to handle it. We'll start it off with the basic attack from her. Dead Edge can hit up the Swordsman, and she can use Shadow Flame to finish off the Swordsman. And we'll let... Short Spear can do enough damage for the rest of this Elite Goblin. Very nice. Perform one perfect kill. We've got the perfect kill, so we're fine. Alright. Got some more enemies. We'll start off with Shadow Flame on her, Dead Edge on him, and another Shadow Flame on her. Finished all the enemies, and now we should get the boss. And this is the boss. Alright, so... We'll start this off with the basic attack from her, then he could grab the short spear, which is gonna give us a break for this guy. She could use... She can just use Shadow Flame. We're gonna do it actually on, on this guy, so we could get some breaks here. If we use a short spear, we can get a bonus here, that's good. Then she's gonna finish off the goblin, and the boss is stunned, so even if we don't finish him off, which we won't, he's not gonna hurt us at all. Which is nice, I think. We've got a new enemy there, that's good. We'll start with Camilla, as always. Nice, and we finished the boss, so we finished them all off. Very nice. And we've got even more money. And another card. So a rare weapon. Slash pierce and defense piercing. If target has a positive defense effect, directly damage their HP by that amount. Ooh, nice. Attack with attack plus five. Or attack plus three, but for three enemies in a row, we're gonna have to grab that on edge. That's really, really good. Also, I kind of want to level him up now. Let's do it. Max HP when HP is... Yeah, let's increase his max HP overall. That seems like a good thing to have. And we'll go... Let's go towards the ruins. Then we'll move... Actually, we should move towards the explorer so we can get towards a camp. Just in case we're gonna need it later. Alright. We've got Thunderbolt and Pain Waver. We'll start this off with... Sh no, not Shadow Flame. With uh, the DMR. Then... Edge is going to go with the short sphere. And she'll continue with the shadow flame. Edge is gonna finish the enemy off. It's very nice. A deal greater than 15 damage once. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. We'll definitely try. Now this seems like a good idea to use one of these spheres. 
Yeah, eight damage. Nice. And she can do a break on the guy in the middle. And he can finish it off with Death Edge here. I don't think the damage stacks. I don't think the two times eight actually stacked for us, so let's use short sphere. Let's see. Yeah, it didn't stack, alright. Alright, we'll start this with Shadow Flame on Camilla. Death Edge on Edge. We could do 14 damage, but not 15 damage. That's kind of irritating. I'll do it, but it didn't help us the thing we needed to. 12 damage would kill him. And stun him. Then we can do... Yeah, we can't get a break, um, break chain here, so yeah, never mind. He's still stunned, so we're not too worried. Alright, what's next? Shadow Flame on Camilla, Short Sphere on these two so we can break from the guy behind. And she should be able to hit the boss. I think we're just gonna finish the boss here. Well, actually, do we need to? We could do a break like this. Nice. And we killed them all with an attack of 8. We didn't get the max damage, so we're not gonna get the Dimension Stone reward. We're only gonna get this basic reward. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's alright. This so... Okay, er Erlix. So we could increase our cunning. When skill is used on ally, we get status effects nil to all allies. Yeah, so we can actually avoid all status effects. This relic by itself is pretty rubbish, but I would like the cunning thing. Ooh, but this poison actually is pretty good. I'm gonna grab the poison, we're not gonna utilize the karma just yet. I'm gonna give this to Edge, because we're not utilizing the karma anyway. You need to have Karma of 3 to get an effect, but I think this Poison thing is quite nice. And if we got to Rejection Karma 3, Magic Barrier effect plus 15% when casting Magic Barrier recover 2 HP to self. That's interesting. Let's go grab... a treasure? Ooh, more Rejection. When a weapon is broken, make skills available for all allies again 3 actions earlier. Ooh, nice. Or Cunning. Add a skill attack plus 4, but we lose 3 HP ourselves, but it's quick, so we can use it and then do more attacks. I'm gonna grab this turmoil, I'm gonna give it on Camilla, and she now is going to have the passive effect of cunning, so on a perfect kill she makes skills your usable one action earlier, and every time a turn starts, she's gonna attack one random enemy with fire. Which I think is very, very cool. Well, actually, I think this is a good time to end the episode, but I really like this game, so I'm going to continue the Let's Play. So you can click on the right to watch the next one, or you can click on the bottom to watch For the War, which is another really cool roguelike deck builder. I'll see you there. Bye-bye!